name's Al McCauley. Welcome to Fish on Friday. And today I want to talk about something that's kind of misunderstood by a lot of people, especially non-Catholics. And it's something I get asked a lot over the years I've been asked about this particular topic. For instance, behind me you'll notice that I have certain objects besides books. I have a, a picture of St. Augustine, one of my favorites. St. Teresa of Lisieux, an icon of her. A statue of St. Francis of Assisi. All of these objects are examples of things the church collectively calls sacramentals. And so often I'd get questions about, you know, why do you Catholics thumb those rosary beads and why do you smudge ashes on your forehead and, and why, do you, why do you pray to these in front of these icons and in front of these statues? It looks like you're worshiping them. And of course we're not. That's, that's the answer right off the bat. We do not worship anything or anybody but God and God alone. But again, the church calls these things collectively sacramentals, and, and you may have examples of them in your home, and we'll talk about a few other examples a bit more in depth a little bit later, but just so we understand each other, sacramentals are visible signs. They can be any number of things. It could be a word, it could be a color, it could be a gesture, it could be an object like these things I've shown you. They're signs that help us to come closer to God through prayer. They're not magical talismans. They're not magical, don't offer me any kind of special magical protection that if I wear a certain religious medal or whatever, I'm going to be protected from all harm. Um, that's, that's not, that's bordering on the occult. Uh, that's not something that the Catholic Church uh, is about. These things are spiritual reminders of a deeper reality. You know, in, in my house I have, in my office, I have um, a Bible, that I, that my study Bible, and I have a Catholic catechism. The Catholic catechism is basically a book that tells you anything you want to know about the Catholic Church. And the catechism says this. It says, sacramentals prepare us to receive grace. Sacramentals prepare us to receive grace. So we don't get grace from these statues and these icons and rosaries and stuff, but they prepare our hearts and our minds to be the recipients of God's grace. And, and grace, of course, is God's ever-present help. We don't deserve it, we can't earn it, but God freely gives it to us. And sacramentals, our use of them, is our way of co-working or cooperating with God's grace. So when I wear every day, I have a sacramental around my neck. It's a medal of St. Teresa of Lisieux, okay? And I'll be doing, I love St. Teresa, and I will be doing a special episode just devoted to her uh, in the future in a few weeks now. But, but this medal, when I wear it, it doesn't protect me from any kind of violence or harm or sickness or anything like that. But what it does do is it reminds me of the spiritual gifts that she had. It reminds me of the life she lived. It reminds me of the way she prayed and the way she interacted with others and the way she tried to imitate Christ. And so it predisposes me, it softens me up, if you will, to receive the grace of God to do those things in my own life. Now, do I always do them? Of course not. I fail. I'm sinful like everybody. But it's an ever-present reminder that I need to, to try to live my life in a way that is worthy of the gift of grace that God has given me. And it's interesting, if you have a medal like this or a rosary in your pocket, um, you know, I can feel it through my shirt. And there are times during the day when it's tough and I can just do this and I can tell, and I'm not, I'm not doing this again because it's some magical properties that's going to make everything better. I do this to remind myself to pray like Therese did in this case, because it's a medal of St. Therese. You might have a medal or a scapular um, of, of some saint that you have, um, you know, a, the likeness of a saint that you, that's a patron saint or your confirmation name, something that is someone that's very close to you in a spiritual sense. I, I would encourage you to do that often. The, the sacramentals, the idea of sacramentals are very important to our lives because they're a reminder of blessing to us, they're a reminder of God's grace. So I just want to talk about a few because there, there are some obvious ones and maybe some that, that aren't as obvious to, to you. Um, ashes. Every Ash Wednesday we get ashes smudged in our forehead. If you're not, you know, that reminds us that we're going to die. It reminds us of our death the impermanence of this life, that we should really try to put our, all our eggs in the spiritual basket, if you will, in heaven, as opposed to uh, worrying about this life, which is why we fast and, and we give up things during Lent. If you don't know this, the ashes are the residue from another sacramental, 
from the palms from Palm Sunday, the palm branches from, from the previous year's Palm Sunday. And that's, that's another thing that is a sacramental. Um, I, I knew a priest who joked once that uh, people love coming to Mass on Ash Wednesday and Palm Sunday because they have take-homes, they have giveaways. They get ashes and they get palms. But the palms remind us of the majesty of Jesus, and they remind us that he is going to die just a short week after he rides triumphantly into Jerusalem. He's going to die. And so it's, it's a, a reminder of our own mortality, too, that, that we shouldn't get you know, too high because you know, our life is, is, at least our earthly life, will end at some point. But just, just a few others. Holy water. Every time we go into Mass and to a church, we, we put our hand in as if to die, that we're dying. We're going into the grave. And we have our hand in there and we bring it out to remind us that we're going to rise like Jesus did. And then we sign ourselves. That gesture itself, the sign of the cross, is a sacramental. Think about colors. When we go to Mass in Advent or Lent, we're reminded of, of penance. And so we think and we see the color purple everywhere. <clears throat> You know, we think of, of the Holy Spirit and fire, and so whenever there, ever there's a confirmation or Pentecost, we see red, and in great celebrations like Christmas and Easter, we see white, and so a green in ordinary time to remind us of new life, that we have to live the lessons of the churches, um, the other parts of the church here, so that we can, that we can grow. Um, other sacramentals are rosaries uh, that, we, that we pray. What about candles, Can especially candles that we light like, um, Candles at, at the back of churches oftentimes, there'll be prayer candles that you can light. As you think prayerfully about somebody, candles are associated very closely to incense. In special masses, uh, funerals, and in, in high masses, we'll have incense. And the priest will incense the altar, uh, the minister will be incensed, the, the people will be incensed, as well as the ambo where the word is, is read from. And it's to remind us that, that the presence of God is in all four of those places. The incense is used in four places. It's used on the celebrant. It's used on the, at the place where the, the word of God is opened and read. And it's used on the altar. It's in, the altar is incense to remind us that Jesus' presence is there. And then, of course, the faithful, the gathered faithful. <clears throat> so the real presence of Christ is in all four of those areas. But when you think of incense, the two things that, the two senses that are most obviously affected by incense are smell and, and sight. So we smell it. It's very pungent. It's very aromatic. It, it's, it's, not un, it, it's very much unlike anything we smell probably in the course of our normal days. So it, it automatically should, should spark our attention. And when you think about the smoke as it rises, we should imitate that smoke. Our prayers should always rise to heaven. And, and our prayers are not just to be words or thoughts, but they're to be actions. So in the same way that we can see the smoke rise, our prayers need to in, inform our lives in such a way that it moves us to action. Prayer changes us. It doesn't change God. And so our prayer can't just be hollow words. We have to do something about them. And so this is the power of, of um, sacramentals, that they remind us of these realities and they point us to God's grace and they open us up and soften us up to God's grace. The last one I'll talk about is icons. You see a few behind me, different ones, more modern ones, but icons are wonderful retelling of stories, either of the life of Jesus or of particular saints. They're not meant to be photographs. They're not historically accurate necessarily, but they are highly symbolic. And they're supposed to teach us something, uh, one or two or three things about that saint or about Jesus or about Mary that is something that we can take to heart. And again, it can, it can help soften us and dispose us to the grace that God offers us every day so that we can see that grace around us in all things, in all places, in all people. Thanks for tuning in. I hope that this has been helpful. If you have any comments or questions, please feel free to leave them. I hope that you would think about uh, possibly subscribing to this YouTube channel if you are interested in uh, watching other videos. We've got a ton of them there. If you know somebody who might be interested or could learn from this particular video, please feel free to share it. I hope you will tune in again for more episodes of Fish on Friday. Until next time, be good to each other and God bless.